Martin is the worst chess bot ever made, but he sometimes says he beats his kids in chess. So I decided to pair up Martin against his kids. I might say, who are those kids actually? Well, I have a theory that it's Milica bot because her description says that she recently beat her dad. Serbia and Hungary are bordering countries, so maybe Martin is a divorced dad, you know, very close countries. So I decided to pair them up in a chess game, and boys, I, I promise you the end of this game, I will need to show you proof that this happened. Like, I will actually need to show you proof, because it's that crazy, it's that insane. So let's just jump into it. We get Martin starting the game off with the white pieces with d4. My man likes to play a good opening, okay? We get d5, pretty normal stuff, and Martin here develops a knight. Pretty standard stuff so far, Milica develops a knight, and we get the black mar Demar Gambit. I didn't know Martin knows what a Gambit is. I thought he only knew of the Botas Gambit, but no, he apparently knows this. And in this position, Milita takes with the knight, basically getting a knight trade, and Martin Gambit's another pawn. Now, this is a real opening because if you take this, knight takes, and as you can see, the position is basically equal because, yes, you did technically lose a pawn, but you have more development. Your knight is developed, your bishop is gonna get developed, okay? You have more space in the center. So, this is a real thing, but Milica bot doesn't take this pawn. Instead, she develops her bishop. It's kind of a square where it sucks. You shouldn't develop a bishop there in most cases. Now, Martin takes, and look at Martin. He's controlling the center. He has two pawns in the center. He's gonna develop the knights, the bishops, and he's gonna be amazing, right? Well, the knight jumps in, uh, putting some pressure on this pawn. Now this pawn is not hanging. Uh, and actually, Martin is better here because he can start pushing P. He can start pushing these pawns. He can play E5. He can play maybe even D5. But Martin doesn't decide to do that. Uh, instead, he plays Rook to B1. Just Martin things, okay? I, like, if you want to explain this move, just say it. Martin played it, okay? Rook B1, what does it do? I have no idea. He wants to probably push the B pawn, but who who the hell knows? I don't think even Martin knows. Now the knight jumps in, and this is another bad move. As you can see, the evil bar will get a workout this game, especially near the end, okay? The knight jumping in here is bad because you can kick it out. You can play C3, you can play A3, doesn't really matter. Martin doesn't do that. He starts pushing pawns on the other side of the board, and uh, Martin is completely lost again because, I mean, you can play C6. Attacking this pawn and it's pinned to the rook so you can't push it. You have to go and defend that pawn very passively. But Milica doesn't decide to do that. Uh, instead, that knight she just moved, she moves it back. Yeah, I have no idea what this move does, where this knight is gonna go. Because you can't reroute it here really, this pawn holds this square. Uh, are you gonna go back? Like, the knight on the rim is pretty grim. So, we get to G5. Martin is dedicated to pushing that G pawn, whatever it takes, goddammit. Now, Milica pushes the pawn, and here Martin plays a spectacular move. King to E2. The bomb cloud. And it's not only the bomb cloud, boys. After the bishop moves, we get King to D2. The extended bomb cloud. Martin is basically trolling her kids. Look at this. Now the rook goes to the C file, and look at this. Queen to e1. Martin wants to switch the places of the king and the queen. Martin is such a troll. I love it. He is completely lost, but I love it. Now the knight re-rotates back. I guess that was the whole point of pushing the c-pawn to get the knight here, which is stupid because what does the knight do here exactly? I mean, he can go here. He can go here maybe in the future, but... Eh. Martin starts pushing pawns. He really wants to weaken his king. He starts pushing the c-pawn himself, goes to c4. This pawn is not hanging because the bishop defends it. And now we get a6. So much pawn play in this game that does absolutely nothing. By some surprise, the game is equal. Even though Martin played the double bomb cloud queen switch, it's somehow equal still. Uh, now he develops the knight, completely blundering this pawn because now the bishop no longer defends it. And Milica, of course, doesn't take it. She moves the rook to the b-file, probably wanting to push the b-pawn. And Martin goes to the g-file because he already pushed the g-pawn very far forward. He needs to supported basically right we get a5 which is again a terrible move makes the game equal and martin here really flubs it by playing bishop to g2 why is this so bad well i mean you lose a pawn you attack the knight and if you remove the knight as a defender this pawn is gonna be weak i mean Milica is just gonna get in there and mess martin up so the rook goes back to its original place you know moving back and forth and now the game is equal again oh uh, but not because martin plays c2 king c2 look at this amazing move martin did this with his king e1 e2 d2 c2 what a gangster dude we get b6 and martin starts pushing the pawns on the king side or the queen side because he switched the places of the king and the queen now the bishop finally takes this pawn and Milica is looking a bit better here because she's up a pawn now martin jumps the knight and the queen takes another pawn martin is down two pawns and he's kind of in danger here i mean the king is very weak. There's a queen and a bishop trying to hunt this king down. The rook is gonna come in here. The knight is gonna jump in. What is Martin gonna do? Well, this is what Martin is gonna do. Push upon. Yeah, push up, push upon. Now, the engine here actually recommends knight to d5. The point being, if you take uh, its checkmate in one, and what does Milica bot play in the position where the king is so weak? 
Well, she brings the rook. Now you might say, why is this a bad move? You can see the evil bar shooting up. Why is this so bad? Well, because Martin actually finds the top engine move. You're not gonna believe me, but Martin finds bishop takes c6. Yeah, the only thing you can do here is block with the rook. And now Martin is completely winning. Like, it's plus 5 for Martin. And do you want to know what Martin plays in this completely winning position? Bishop to d3. Blundering the game away. A uh, check. King has to move. Let's say he goes to d1. That's the best move. You lose a rook. I mean, you're going to lose the game. You're basically done here. But uh, that does not happen because <laughs> Militza just pushes a pawn like there's nothing happening on the other side. And now the game is technically equal, but it's never equal when Martin is in charge because now Martin moves the bishop. He just moves the damn bishop. Now the rook is no longer pinned. You have a rook and a queen double stacked, a bishop close to the king, and weak pieces in front. So uh, this is about to be very fun for Martin to defend. And Militza goes back with the bishop. Uh, I don't hate this move, actually. It's trying to stop the spin again in case of anything happening. Now, of course, you could just move the rook. You could just play any other move, but it, it has some logic behind it. It wants to stop the spin. and wants to keep this bishop basically from attacking her. Martin plays king to c1. This king has been on a walk, bro. e1, d2, c2, e c1. <laughs> like, what is this king doing? And now she pushes a pawn. Now, Martin, of course, doesn't know Wampasan here. He doesn't take sin. I know, like, how can you do this, Martin? But Martin brings the rook. And here's where the game gets really tricky for Martin. Uh, because after a4 and the queen moving to d2, the queen infiltrates, okay? And it's putting pressure on the knight. It's putting pressure on the rook. It's putting pressure on this bishop. It is very hard to defend your whole position here. And how does Martin defend this then? Uh, well, he doesn't. He plays b4. <laughs> I mean, yeah, b4 in this position where your king is weak, where all of your pieces are hanging, where you're gonna basically lose in a few moves. b4, I love it, love it. But in this position, Milica surprises us all by sacrificing a certain piece that another YouTuber might yell at. She sacrifices the rook, but she did not sacrifice it for nothing. It's a great tactic by her because now she can take the rook. She does not do that, in fact, and uh, she just hangs a queen. <laughs> the queen is completely hanging. You could say she sacrifices the queen, but uh, a sacrifice usually gets you something in return. Uh, but no, Martin does not take that queen. Instead, he plays a3. <laughs> I mean, this game is a roller coaster. Trust me, boys, the ending. You will not believe it. And now she's like, oh my god, bro, I, I hung my queen. <laughs> That's so funny. She takes the rook finally. And now she is completely winning. Martin brings the bishop back. And here, Militza plays the bishop to b6. Yeah, blundering checkmate in two. And if you know something about my boy Martin, you know he doesn't miss those. Check after the king moves. I mean, there's two mates. You can go queen to d6. You can go queen to d7. He decides to go queen to d7, and Martin checkmates Milica, who is double his rating, more than double his rating, and his kid, Martin absolutely incinerates this from a completely losing position. What a game, boys. If you want to watch an insane game, maybe watch the time when I played Nelson, but he was controlling my luck with the Wheel of Fortune. And I'll see you boys in the next time. Love you, bye.